So, without wasting any more time, let's start the video. As you all know, according to YouTube's new policy, you cannot directly put external links in the comment section or description. That's why I never put links in the description or comments. Instead, all my links are available on my website, where you can easily access the files. But if you don't know how to download the file, then watch this part completely. First, go to the About section of my channel, where you'll find the link to my website. Simply click on it. Alternatively, you can manually type Tech Decode Official in the search bar, and you will redirect it to my website. After this, type the name of the file you want to download. Suppose I want to download the Fusion Emulator. I will type Fusion Emulator here. Now, click on the post that appears. Then, scroll down and copy the link you find there and paste it into a new tab. Then you will see an interface like this. Now, fill the CAPTCHA and click the Continue button. If a new tab opens, simply close it. After that, click the Continue button again. And if another new tab opens, close it as well. After this, click on the Get Link button and a timer will automatically start. And once it completes, a Get Link button will appear. And you need to click on it. After that, you will finally reach the download page. Now that you know how to download the file, let's move on to the installation process. So, I have downloaded all these files and it is compulsory to download all of them. First, we will install Grub2Win. The installation is very simple. First, you need to connect your PC to the internet because you cannot install Grub2Win without an internet connection. Then, double click on the setup to launch it. After that, a pop-up will appear where you need to click the OK button. And this will start the installation. During the installation, make sure not to click on this part of the screen, otherwise, the installation will fail. Now, the installation of Grub2Win is complete, and next, we will install Disk Genius. The installation of Disk Genius is also very easy. First, extract the Disk Genius zip file. Since it's only 70 MB in size, it won't take much time to complete. Once the extraction is complete, you'll see a folder, and from that folder, launch the setup file and install Disk Genius. After installation, uncheck both boxes and click the Finish button. Next, go back to the Disk Genius folder where you'll see two subfolders. If your PC is 64-bit, click on the 64-bit folder, and if it is 32-bit, click on the 32-bit folder. Since my Windows is based on 32-bit architecture, I'll choose the 32-bit option. Now, copy the two files from this subfolder and paste them into the main directory of Disk Genius, replacing the existing files. So, I've installed both Disk Genius and Grub2Win. Now, let's move on to the next chapter. Installing Disk Genius or Grub was quite easy, but now our main work will start. So you need to watch the video very carefully. First, you need to open Disk Genius and select any one partition. Make sure the partition you select is completely empty and has at least 10 GB of storage space. Then right-click on the partition where you want to install the operating system and select the format option. In the partition system, you need to select EXT4 option and leave the volume label empty and click the format button. However, my chosen partition is already formatted in EXT4, so I won't format it again. After formatting, you need to open the same partition and create a new folder there. Then, open the grub code you have downloaded, copy this name from here, and paste it into Disk Genius. In the next step, create a new folder inside this folder and name it Data. After this, minimize Disk Genius and extract the ISO file you downloaded. Since the ISO file size is quite large, extracting it will take a considerable amount of time. One hour later. As soon as the extraction is complete, you need to go to the extracted folder and only copy the files that I am copying. And do not copy any other files. Otherwise, you will get an error during booting and your operating system will not install. The file copying has started here, so let's wait for a bit until it's done. Once the files are copied, you need to close Disk Genius. And we are not done yet. There is one more task remaining, but before that, we need to create a boot entry. To create a boot entry, First, open Grub and then go to Manage the Boot menu. Then, click on Add New Entry option. Then, select Submenu from the drop down box. In the Title section, type Spectre OS. Now, minimize Disk Genius and open the Grub code. And
and copy all the text from here. Then, come back to Grub2Win and click on Edit Custom Code. Now, paste the copied code here and save the text file. After that, click on OK button, and then, click the Apply button to save all these changes. So, our work is almost done here. Now, I will restart the PC and record the remaining process with a hand cam. As soon as you restart the PC, a boot menu will appear in front of you. From there, you need to select Spectre OS and press Enter. Then, the loading system of this operating system will start, and it will take around 8 to 9 minutes to complete. One hour later. After the loading process is complete, you will see an interface like this, and you need to set it up the same way you used to set up the old Phoenix OS. So, here we have successfully installed Spectre OS. And now we have one last task to do, because if you don't do it, you will experience lag in performance. For this last step, you need to go back to Windows and open Disk Genius. Then go to the OS folder where you installed the operating system. Here, you will see a file named Kernel. Simply right-click on it and select the Rename option. Now, type .old after Kernel and save the file. Next, open the folder where you extracted the ISO file and go to the Kernel 2 folder. After that, drag and drop this file into Disk Genius. So, friends, our last task is also complete, and now let's move on to Phoenix OS. So, we are back on Phoenix OS. Now, let's talk about its features. First of all, when you go to the Start menu, you will find many pre-installed apps like Screen Recorder, Audio Recorder, Termux, and also a game helper. Additionally, regarding the Android version, like other OS, you will get Android 7 here, which is fully compatible with almost all PC. There are two ways to install Free Fire and other games on this operating system, either directly from the Play Store or manually. The best method is manual installation, because in this method, there are very few chances of errors, and I would recommend disabling Google Play services to get the maximum performance. First, you need to download both the APK and OBB file. If you are playing a lightweight game, you only need to download the APK file. First, install the APK file, and then once the game is installed, you need to launch it once. Now, as soon as you encounter download failed error, close the game and go to the directory where you downloaded the file. Now, copy the OBB file from there and paste it into the correct directory where I am pasting mine. And since I am installing Free Fire, I will paste it into the Free Fire folder. But if you are installing another game, the folder name will be different. So, I have installed Free Fire, and now I will play it. But first, we need to make an important setting and set up a key map. For this, go to the Start menu and launch the Game Helper. After that, click on the plus icon and select Free Fire or any other game you have installed. Then, click the button to launch Free Fire. Now, if your game gets stuck on loading, don't worry. Just restart the game three to four times and your problem will be solved. So, I have reached the login screen and I will log in with a guest account for now. But you can easily log in with Google or Facebook if you prefer. One more thing, when you launch the game for the first time, it will launch in ultra settings and you might experience lag. So you need to show some patience. And once you reach the lobby, click on the settings button. Then go to the graphics tab and set everything to low. However, if you have a high-end PC with 6 to 8 GB RAM, you don't need to change these settings. After doing this, go to Controls tab and select the Customize HUD option. Then, open the Key Mapper and select the Keyboard option. But if you have a gamepad, you can leave it set to Gamepad. After that, you need to customize key mapping according to your preference. So, let me quickly set this up. I have set up the key mapping properly. And now let's start a match and see how many FPS we get on 2 GB of RAM. Alright friends, I have entered the game and as you can see, I'm getting around 35 to 40 FPS, which is quite sufficient for a PC with 2 GB RAM. Additionally, the key mapping is also working quite well. Although there are slight FPS drops when taking headshots, but they stabilize on their own. Overall, the operating system is quite good and works well. In fact, I like this operating system more than Biometrics OS. Let me know how you feel about it in the comments section below. So, we've reached the end of the video, and I hope you found it quite enjoyable. I covered each aspect in detail to ensure you don't encounter any problems. However, if you still face any issues or errors, or if this is your first time on my channel and you're having trouble downloading files, 
feel free to message me on Instagram. I'll send you a direct download link. Additionally, I have created playlists covering various topics related to Android OS and emulators, so you can check those out as well.